Hey, what's going on everybody? BDL44 coming into another video. So I'm gonna do another therapy session. Um, there's a certain weird piece about what just happened to me right now. And it's, it's weird because it's one of those situations where third time's a charm. The car was taken again. It's only been a month since I got it back. What I think they did was the two months it was not in my possession, they're still charging me for. And because I didn't pay for those two months, they put this third month on top of that and didn't in incentivize the repossession fee um, as payment for the previous month. So I think they've added this up to be four total months for me not playing in a row, as to which in that reality, I've only had the car for a month. <laughs> so not even a month. And they've taken it again this morning. I called everybody I need to call, got that confirmation. I'm going to be honest with you guys. I'm almost relieved. There's a part of my spirit that feels relieved because... I really didn't have any plans for the car. You know, when I prayed about this, when it was first taken, I got the car back because I thought I was going to need the car to work, right? So, you know, I had to get back to work. I was working in, like two days from then, I need the car. The second time I got the car back, I brought the car back because I was afraid that if I had to go back to work, I would need the vehicle, right? But when the car was brought back, I spent $3,000, went through the stress of, of the year, getting the car back the second time, dealing with all the anxiety and all the different things it took to get the car, coughing up all this money to get the car back, for which I'm still suffering off the fact that that money's gone. And when I had prayed about it that second time, and when, the initial, when the car got taken the initial time, when I prayed about it, something in my soul told me that car is gone. But whatever you decide to do, it's, I'm going to work it out. The Lord's basically essentially, it felt in my heart that what I was receiving in, in energy was, I will make it work out either way. But understand that the car is gone. Now, I should have taken that as a sign to say, you know, we just got to accept that. And if I take my $3,000, don't get the, the old car back. Go get another car that's more affordable for me. But I didn't do that. I wasn't wise in that way. What I did was I wanted to bring back my car because I wanted it to be gone on my terms. And I wanted, you know, to, to leave myself the cushion of having the vehicle if necessary. But when I brought it back, do you know I've used that car twice? I jumped in it once to, uh, you know, just kind of go get some food. You know what I mean? Didn't even have a good day doing it. I was having a hard time that day. And then the second time, I think I went like the next day, as you guys saw, I jumped in the car to get it washed. Went down. I think I got myself some 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 bananas at the grocery store or something and did something with my, um, you know, did, did some other errand. And then that was it. Ran home. Ain't left the house since. All my groceries, they get brought to me. Everything I need to do, all that stuff is here. Now, granted, I will probably need to go back to work at some point if, if this life doesn't, you know, hand me a, a blessing in the form of a fucking, excuse my language, but squeeze, right? A AMC squeeze. I don't like cursing on here like that. I'm sorry about that. But, you know, it's one of those things where it's like, I woke up this morning, went outside, did my normal little thing, pressed the button, the car was gone. Looked over there and saw the car was gone. And it was a peace. It was like a, a warm energy, like a good energy, like a monkey had fallen off my back is what I felt like. Because I told myself, I said, if they take this car again, I ain't, I ain't bringing it back. First of all, I don't have the money to do it anyway. I would have to sell out almost half of my position to AMC just to get the car back. I have more than half right now, the way it's bleeding. And um, my crypto's bleeding too. So I'm in the worst financial position I've been in in a million years. And of course, you guys know I'm waiting on my unemployment check that should come any day. Um, which I will not be spending to get that car back. <laughs> Absolutely not. Uh, and if the unemployment doesn't come, I'm really screwed and I'll be calling family to try to help me out or something. But, you know, my thing with the car is just this. It's more of a burden than it's been a blessing since I stopped working. And the reason why I wasn't getting into it was a number of different things. One, I'm in my mindset that I don't hardly leave the house, ever. Um, COVID's out there. I ain't been vaxxed. My mindset, y'all know, if you follow my my uh, various uh, videos like this and therapy sessions, I have detailed in length how my mindset is and why I am the way I am and what I, what I struggle with. I got these shares of AMC and all this good stuff. Hopefully, it can do what it's supposed to do in the short term so it can send me into a position where I don't need to worry about money. But if it don't, uh, things are just getting worse by the second. You know, and that's the truth of my life right now. Um, I ain't going to say 
AMC ruined my life. It's, it's the choice that I've worked that ruined my cir circumstances as it pertains to right now. But even more so, the vehicle was just a burden, man. You figure, <clears throat> when you really think about the car as it pertains to myself, it's sitting in the garage. It doesn't have registration. Registration is going to be $360. Gas prices are at an all-time high, <laughs> right? So you're looking at it that way. And then, like I said, everything I need, I can have brought to me. Groceries and all that stuff. I haven't been to a grocery store with the exception of maybe grabbing some bananas while I was out that one day at all since my car's been gone the second time. So it's like all of my lifestyle is in this house. Um, the only thing I in this house is my money making situation. I don't have a money making situation right now. Um, so, you know, it's just it's hell for me right now as it pertains to my finances. But even more so, it's just hell for me in regards to what I was worried about in regards to the car being taken anyway. Because my thing was this. I didn't have any plans to pay any of that. I don't even have the money to pay any of that. And if I go back out there to work security, um, jumping in my car, going every day, doing the regular thing, what you guys understand about my mindset is that that's going to make me someone who doesn't like living. That's how bad it had gotten for me. That's how bad it still feels. Like, I, I would much rather not, period. <laughs> you know, especially given my current circumstances as it pertains to, there's nobody in my life. There's nothing going on. I got no kids. <laughs> You know, I'm already 38 this year. You know, I've lived. I've had, I, I've lost a lot. You know, I've taken lumps in this life. Um, just like everybody, but even more so mine have come in the last eight years. I feel like my 30s have been stolen away by bereavement. You know, my mom died. My, my dad died. My grandmother broke my heart and then died. It's like, all right. <laughs> okay. You know, you just get tired. I'm not even sad at life anymore. I'm just tired, you guys. You know what I mean? And I feel like, for me, it's like, well, yeah, money will save a lot of my issues from being what they are. Because then I can stop thinking about what I owe and having that limb, you know, lean, you know, on my head. I guess the word would be uh, hanging over my head or my shoulders. You know, leaning on me. It's like, you got to pay this, got to pay this, got to pay this. And it's like, with the mindset I have and the stress um, issues that I take on, you know what I mean? The, the way that my body and my, my mind rather handles stress. I just try my very best to avoid it at all costs. And, you know, it, it's to my detriment detriment in a lot of cases. You know, and and to just be honest with everybody, you know, I've always wondered, because I've been like this my whole life, um, wanting to stay away from others, wanting to stay away from pressures, wanting to stay away from doing things that otherwise make me feel gr horribly, like a grueling sensation. Uh, I've made choices that have sacrificed things that I've really needed. You know, really needed places to stay, vehicles, things that you need, I've put at risk to keep from facing certain anxieties. And, and it's like, that's, that's what mental health, that's why I advocate for mental health so hard. That's why I, I sympathize with what I perceive as Ben Simmons circumstances, because I'm living it. I need to be outside working a job for 20 hours a day to fix my situation. And I can't even bring myself to leave the house to get in my car just to go down the street. It's, it's, it's anxiety overwhelming and it's like at some point in time to be honest with you guys I need to start looking into and this is this is where, where it goes to next I need to start looking into where if such a thing exists because I do live in California but if there's anything that helps people like myself I need to find it you know what I mean I think one of the reasons why working in Santa Monica place ultimately became so much of a detriment to me mentally is because I started seeing people that showed me what my future would be if I don't get the help that I need. That's the reality of I started seeing, oh, not started seeing, I was constantly surrounded by wandering individuals with, with deep mental health concerns that don't have any help, you know? And, and you see that every day, and you, you see a couple of them jump off a roof here and there. It's like, it gets to a point where you're like, my God, man, you know, this is going to be me. It's literally going to be me. I used to, I used to think, about that kind of stuff when I was uh, walk, living in Wilshire as well. I was like, you know, the way my world, the way my mind works, the way my whole synopsis is, I, pro I, I, I more so saw myself being a wandering homeless person talking to himself than a someone who would be successful in the things that I love to do. Like I saw that path more so for me, just because of how my practices are, what I'm used to, how I do things. The, the isolation that I find myself in 90% of the time is just if you don't have any help, you don't have any initiation of motivation for which 
I don't think that's what it is. I grew up to believe that I was lacking in motivation. That wasn't it. I was protecting myself from uncertain and unseen dangers that I perceived to be dangers or fears or what have you. And in, it, it, and in doing so, it has, um, it is, it is, has kept me from things. It's, it's ruined opportunities for me. It's, it's put me in situations where I felt worse than I needed to feel. And ultimately left me in situations where I had to fight to want to live. And, you know, I woke up this morning when I saw that car. I didn't feel that way, you know. I don't feel that way right now. I feel fine. Like, literally fine. Am I concerned that I may have to go somewhere and won't have the car to do it? Honestly, no. <laughs> I should be. Especially given the circumstances I have going on with my living situation. But I just, I'm just standing on the Lord as I always do. Um, and, and, and I know deep down that he gave me this challenge. He gave me these these concerns he gave me these 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 challenges uh so that i can be who i am in the moments i'm allowed to live you know to be who i am to come at you from this angle to say i understand this type of mental health thing because i am going through it most people i talk to can't relate to the stuff that i'll be talking about as it pertains to people's mental health they don't see the signs they don't know when a situation is a mental health concern because they don't have those concerns themselves the lord has blessed me with the curse of these mental health issues issues and giving me the consciousness and the spirituality of mind to stay present to describe it to you it's a gift but it's a curse and i suffer because of it this is the truth about bdf 44 man it's just the truth <laughs> and it's like you know my mother didn't know what to do with me my my father wasn't present necessarily my family wasn't close enough to me to me to know what's going on my brothers and sisters they don't even know this about me they think i'm just kind of a guy who stays away i guess i don't know what they think to be honest with you but i know they don't know and it's like at some point in time you got to get to a point where you love yourself you know you literally love yourself you can't beat yourself up for what you struggle with because only the only thing that does is reinforce more struggle the only, all that does is reinforce more pain into your heart and, and more deterrence to say you know, I'm a useless person or that I can't do this, I can't do that. No, the Lord made me exactly what he wanted me to be. And he gave me what he wanted me to have and he took it when he was ready for it to go. And that is how I'm looking at this vehicle right now. That's exactly how I'm looking at it. I prayed for that car. Prayed, hands and knees. And you know what happened? I looked for a vehicle that I wanted. And I said, that's the one I want to get. Prayed about that particular car. Didn't have a path to that vehicle. Could barely find it. It was only like three of them available. Went all the way out. Had my friend T. Praise God for him and his help. My boy T. Drove me all the way out to where we could purchase it. Got all the way out there. Took about an hour and ten minutes to get out there. Only to find out that I didn't have the proper stuff to get the deal. So he had to drive me back all the way back home. No car. But then I was able to find it somewhere else. With a better deal. My uncle helped me get the best deal. Man. That vehicle was exactly what I wanted it to be. It was even better than the color I had in mind. And it served it, its purpose. I didn't have one single car accident in that car. Two years. Not one single car accident. Thing got me from one job to the next. Took care of me in circumstances where the fog was so dark I couldn't even see. Listen to some of my favorite playlists. Some of my favorite moments driving the vehicle was dri driven in that vehicle. It served its entire purpose, man. And not only did it serve its purpose, but I fought to keep it. I fought as hard as my mind would allow me to, to keep it. When it left, when it when it got repoed the first time, I came back, brought it back. Spent every coin I could to get it. Did everything I could, was proud of myself, got it done. When they took it again, I went through that process, boom, 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 I got it back again. But there was no plan for the vehicle. I was deep in my mental space, holding these shares, getting deeper and getting sicker and sicker mentally. And there was no plan for the car. Still ain't no plan for the car. To be honest with you, I walk out there doing two things every time I walk out the house. I look at my door to see if there's a notice on there to see if I'm evicted. Then I go out and, and put the press the button on my car to see if it's there. Those are things that I do because I'm so damn terrified at all times of the consequences of the choices that I've made to protect my mind from its very own self. That's how real my mental illness is. I'm not proud of it. I'm not ashamed of it. I'm just living with it. And the sad thing is, I'm a talented person. Very talented in, in multiple ways. 
And so the very thing that creates all this concern also gives me the confidence and the ability to do the things that I'm able to do artistically. Talk to you in this camera, go in and make a great playlist, go in there and make some great vi uh, visual art, write down some poetry. I can do all five. I can do all four, rather. Give me, give me two hours. I can, put, I can put together something good in every one of those categories. Literally. The Lord has always made me good at these things. But what he's also made me is somebody who's, who's deathly terrified of his very own perception. But the thing that makes it even worse is when I'm in the presence of man, I fear not. When I'm in the presence of situations like a car accident or something, it's the weirdest damn thing, you guys. In that very same car, I've been able to avoid near-death accidents without any reaction to my mind whatsoever. I remember one time a guy was coming at me. I don't know how the hell he got in my lane, but I was able to swerve around him without getting hit and just kind of shook it off like I had made it, like I dunked on somebody. That was my reaction. Real, actual, dangerous situations do nothing to my concerns. It's my imagination and the anticipation of fear that ultimately cripples me. That's what it is, man. And because of it, I've gone with it so little. I've foregone opportunities to have a lifestyle that I've loved. I've missed out on opportunities to do things that would have been great for me. I've missed out on relationship opportunities that could have gave me a family full of kids. I've missed out on opportunities to get close to people that I've loved that have passed away. I've missed out on good moments with my friends and family. All of this has been because of this. It's not because of them or anything they did to me. It ain't because of my mama or nothing. nothing happened. No, it's just the brain, man. It's just the brain. So if ever I could just say something, I'd just say, man, I never thought, and this is the God's honest truth. I never thought I was meant to be here too long, man. Not on this earth. I never thought that because you can't sustain being this way. It's impossible. This is an ambitious world. Everybody after everything, bro. And it's like if you're somebody who just wants to sit in one spot or feels the need to sit in one spot, you will have everything taken from you by the ambitious, by the transactions of the world. People will take all that you have. You cannot stay still and be at peace. There's no such thing. You can try to find yourself far away in an island somewhere and the world will come to you. Just wait on it. They're coming. You have to stay active in this world. You have to be churning. You have to. And I never was that person. Some will say I'm lazy. I don't think so. I don't believe so. I've worked plenty. I've worked security for 10 years. I'm not a lazy person. You know, I'm one of the most monotonous people in the world. I, I, I worked out for three hours a day, for every day, with the exception of two days off, for which was monotonous, for four years. How's that lazy? You feel me? It's not laziness. And then there's something else I was talking to God about this morning. God said something to me in, in prayers as he tends to here and there. You know, it's like, you know, you know, you can go out and get a job. But if you get a job, you'll feel better about certain things. But I'm like, I know that I'm, I'm telling myself of this in my head. So I wouldn't say it's God. It's me, like giving myself the wisdom that I already have. But the reality is it's not wisdom that I'm lacking. It's the ability to overcome the fear of the concerns that may take place if I go out there and do what it is that I ultimately do not want to do for whatever reason. If I chosen to not want to do it or if I'm afraid something's going to happen because I don't do it or however, my mind will magnify those concerns. It makes it so that it debilitates me. It makes it so that I don't want to move at all. You know, and it's like I kick my own butt about that. I watch people talk bad about me because they didn't understand it. My own mother talked bad about me at times because she would say, you know, all you got to do is walk down the street, take your resume. You can get a job anywhere. The way you talk, the way you are, why don't you use your tools? It's like, Mom, it's not about me not wanting to or not seeing the fruit in doing so. I see it. I've always seen it. If, if you're somebody who's in my position, I can give them advice <laughs> that I think will work. It's about doing those things myself that I have trouble with and by, by myself at that. My mother used to also tell me not, not every, no one man is an island beg to differ. I have been. <laughs> I have been. And I live fine if I had a bunch of money to let me do it. But I don't. I should, based on what I own. But what I own is corrupted. Compromised. And ultimately, it's, it's the problem with doing it the way that I've done it. But the only reason why I did it this way is because I know I need that type of money. And it's the only path I might have to it. 
because I can't go and do this, this, and this. Even as a talent, I go and sign a contract. I probably, with my mindset, ain't going to be able to live up to the terms. I'll just be real about that. I may wake up one morning and feel anxiety about coming in that day. And I'm not going to let that contract keep me from that. Let's go to court. As you can see with the card. That's how that goes. That's why I never stepped out and did certain things because I know me. I know me. At 37 years, you don't be confused about self. You know who you are. This is who I'm going to be for the rest of my life, which is why I'm getting to a point where I'm wondering, how do I move forward in life? How do I stay wanting to live when everything is being taken from me and the only thing I really see is homelessness ahead of me? Like literal homelessness. Because <laughs> I look at my family, my grandfather, they got a couple of dollars they may be able to help me with, but not long term. Eventually, we're going to be right back at the situation in my 40s. We're going to be right back here. I just don't want to do this forever, you guys. I really don't. I don't. I don't want to live my life the same way I've been living it for the last 37 years, which has been constantly foregoing wisdom and things that need to be done because my brain won't allow me to get out of my own way. It just won't let me. It won't let me. I won't let me. Got to own it. That's important as well. So I love transparency, man. I love it because there will be a day when I won't be able to explain all this to you guys. This needs to be captured. This needs to be there for somebody else to see this. Somebody's child may be showing signs of this. You can get to him. You can get to him. You got to find out what triggered that. And then you got to give him passions. You got to find out what it is he's good at. And you got to cater your entire development toward his or her strengths. I needed music. I needed art. I needed broadcasting. I needed all of those different things that would have cultivated me into being a more healthier artist and ultimately would have gave me more opportunities to take care of myself. So, this is what it is, man. This is this is the situation. Car gone, I ain't bringing it back. Apartment probably going to go too. It's it's a matter of time. You know, it's just a matter of time. And unless unless one or two things happen, either somebody in my family shoots me a bunch of cash to take care of my situation or AMC goes to the moon as to which I don't ever have to worry about cash for the, for the time being. But now that one of those things happen, I'm pretty much screwed, like deathly screwed. But I'm still standing because my faith is real. My prayers are strong and I know what I own. See, if there was no path, they would really be the dumps. If I didn't see a path to being okay, hmm, really be screwed. But there's a path. Maybe I've hanged my hat on that path a little too hard, to say the very least. Should never do things the way I did in these last year. And I will admit I'm stuck in certain ways that have made, made it so that, you know, the negative aspect of this is reinforced. But at the end of the day, man, I don't hate myself. I'm not mad at myself. I'm not scolding myself. I'm not looking at me saying, you should have did. No, no. No, I'm not giving myself excuses either. There's balance here. You could have done certain things differently, but not in the way that I tell myself. What I could have did differently is communicated with my grandfather more so. What I could have did more so of was talking to my friends about what's going on with me. Getting the people in my life that pray about certain things to have more energy toward praying for what it is that I got going on. There are a lot of things I could have done. I could go outside and, and try to swallow my anxiety and try to try to work for as long as my mind will allow me to and hope I don't spaz out in front of everybody, which I'm worried about, literally worried about. Have been worried about that the whole time. So one of the things that kept me in here. I just, I, I believe I went through some type of mental break many times over, actually, probably two or three of them in my life. One most recently, these last six months. And, you know, you just wish you lived in a state um, that catered to the mental health issues a little more, that gave more to people like, like myself, you know what I mean? Who who could give a care about us being able to take care of ourselves. And most importantly, not be a danger to others. Can't tell you how many crazy people stories I've been hearing about lately where guys are spazzing out, pushing people in front of trains and stuff like that. It ain't out of no other reason than just mental illness. That's all it is. People doing weird stuff to people. It's all sickness, man. It's all because there's not enough care out there for people who are sick, man. They leave us to our own devices, and then when we spaz out, what happens? Whose fault is it? 
They don't even want to admit that these are mental health issues because to admit that they're mental health issues would be to admit that they have some responsibility. You, the saints, have to help the non saints so that they don't weaponize themselves against you and your families. This is real. I'm not here to sugarcoat this aspect of things because this is the real moment I'm in. It has to be captured in its realest form because this is real life circumstances I believe can help others. I will not lie about that. I will never lie about that. <laughs> Just like I won't lie about how much confidence I have in the things that I believe I'm good at, I won't lie to you guys about how out of control my mind can tend to be. And how much I, I desperately, desperately try to reel it in to keep myself from being anything other than a good person. So far, so good. Not gonna lie. So far, so good. Got a good faith base. I got. I was raised by a wonderful, good-spirited woman. The world is great. If I was raised by bad people, I'd be out there doing bad things. The type of brain I have, I know it. Fortunate, very blessed. But I can't lie and say that things aren't. <clears throat> excuse me. I can't lie and say that things aren't completely and utterly out of control. They are, very much so. Very much so. <laughs> So, that's the moment. That's where we at. I don't feel the same way I did about that car going, though. I ain't gonna lie to you guys. Maybe that's part of the sickness in and of itself, but I feel so relieved that I don't have to worry about that vehicle. So relieved. It was a great burden upon my soul. Now, the only thing I need left to happen is to just pay off these rental people so I ain't gotta continue looking at my door, seeing if the, the paperwork's on there. You feel me? Because that's something I went through at Dunsmere, my old apartment. It's the same exact thing. I've been through this already. I hate to tell you guys, but it's the truth. Been through this. I got evicted the same way because all I can bring myself to do when my mother was going through cancer, uh, when I initially found out she was going through cancer, the only thing I could bring myself to do was to wake up, eat the same breakfast, go outside, jog for a couple minutes, come back in the house, smoke some weed. That's all I could do. You want me to go to work? Good luck. And then everything deteriorated. Eventually, I got evicted. It's the same thing that's happening now, man. I've been through this. It's always been this way. School, same thing. You guys know about that. This is the pattern of my life. So unless, unless I make some changes that need to be made that I'm not going to initiate on my own because if I had, I probably would have done it already. This is going to be what it is. It's going to be what it is. I'm not, I'm not even going to, you know, be in denial about the circumstances. <laughs> so. That's who you're talking to. That's who you hear talking about the Lakers every day. This is a real person with a real life story. And, and look, man, I am not ashamed. I say it again. I'm not. I know I probably should be in some cases, but as you can see by this hairline, I don't hold no shame. I don't harbor any of that. Life's too short. It's too short. I've been through too much. Struggles are too real. The lies my head tell me about how bad things actually are versus how bad I perceive them being, you know, sent to me lying to y'all. I do enough of that to myself. So that's what it is, man. I ain't going to be putting no cash app on here because I don't believe in taking from people. Even when I'm struggling, I'll go to the dirt before I take from you. I won't do it. It's one of the reasons why I haven't communicated with my grandfather because I know I have to tell him what I need. I won't do it. That pride is, is also very much strong within myself. You know, that foolishness, that pride, that must be done away with. Must be. <laughs> But I tell you, man, the truth about my family, my grandfather, the last time I spoke to him, and I think I told you guys this because I did a therapy session that day. I cried on the floor, you know. I, you know, I don't cry at all. But I broke down in this very spot. As I was telling them how hard this has been trying to hold on to these shares, and even though I had money, all of my money was wrapped up in AMC. All of it. But because I had it represented, I didn't want to ask them for it. But this is hard because I'm not doing this just for myself. I'm, I'm holding these shares with dreams of being, getting crazy money so that I can take care of people that are not myself. And that, that point while talking to them made me very, very, very sad, very emotional. And, and I ain't cried very much. I cried maybe two times last year. Before that, I hadn't cried since I was 13 years old. Suppressed trauma, suppressed bereavement issues, all that. Heartbreak suppressed. So, you know, when speaking to them, what I needed them to do 
was recognize how much I believed in what I was doing and to, and to shoot me some money at that time because I wasn't going to be able to, in my mind, do what I needed to do to take care of that. I wasn't going to be able to break away that money to help myself other than to get the car back. And I wasn't going to be able to go out there and do what it is that I should be doing, which was work a security job. Because my mental state ain't going to allow me to do it the right way. <laughs> so because all that's true, and they didn't see the the need to help, I kind of turned a blind eye to want to communicate. Because all they're going to do is remind me of everything that I'm worried about when speaking to them, and then remind me of the fact that they're not going to offer me anything. You have to ask for it. So... I love my family. It's not not that they owe me anything. 37-year-old man, they should not be paying my way. But the reality is, I needed it. They knew it. Didn't come. So, with that being said, I love my family. I'll probably call them and talk to them today because I probably need to let them know what's going on with the vehicle. But that's just the truth about that. As it pertains to my grandfather and, and my uncle and, and my mother's side, I just... And everybody else, all my, all my loved ones, my brothers and sisters, I don't know them well enough to be trying to make money transactions with them. I don't. I love them just the same, but I'm not going to let money um, be a part of what, what that is. <laughs> so a lot is going to happen, you know. A lot is about to happen. I see that. And I don't think I'm prepared for any of it. So, uh, I would love to keep talking, but we're running out of space. <laughs> this is it. <laughs> I got a minute left. But I think the concluded is this. <laughs> I don't know how much time I have on this earth. I really don't. Because I'm telling you guys, I'm not doing this from forever. I'm not. And if shit starts to fall apart any worse than this, we're going to start having real conversations about where it, where it is going. And so, pray for people who go through what I go through. I ain't going to never ask you to pray for me. But pray for people who go through what I go through. Because this mental health thing is not a game. It's not anything to play with. My name is BDL44. Thank you all for watching. I'm out.